Yeah, uh, BMW 528i, am I right? Basically came over here and I think it's a great chance and opportunity to explain to you guys what's the whole story of, the, of this vehicle and also tell you things that you shouldn't ever do and think before you do. So, um, what basically happened to this car is originally, as far as I know, uh, I've been told by another shop who actually brought this car here that uh, they simply try, or not them, someone else, simply try to get something on this vehicle updated, like software update. I think that was engine control module. So they they had a problem with this vehicle. Like it was, I, I believe it was in a link mode or giving them some kind of troubles. And some genius, some genius said, uh, yeah, yeah, they, to fix this problem, you definitely need just the software update. And, and, and that's it, it's gonna fix all the problems. So, you know, the, the owner said, yeah, fine. So he went on the Craigslist or internet, whatever. He found some random guy with uh, brilliant experience who worked uh, everywhere in Mercedes with BMW, Porsche, got scanner that cost millions of dollars. You know, he is super advanced, like so advanced that the most advanced that, that there is nobody most advanced of than this dude. So he said, I know everything, I'll definitely get this car fixed. He, he hooked up his scanner, tried to, you know, uh, click a button, do a very complex job, click a button to update a computer or something, and he basically scrubbed the whole car. After that, the car never started. And guess what? And guess what? He broke the gateway module, okay? He was trying to update engine control module that looks like this, that's located right here. He broke gateway module. Okay, it's a computer that like, all right. Anyhow, quick tip before, uh, before I explain you certain things that I, of course, that I don't know, right? Um, I'm just pretending that I know, I'm just faking this channel for you guys. So you, so you think that, you know, uh, I know what I'm talking about, but I really don't. So um, this, is, this is what I want to tell you. If you really want to get this vehicle updated, and take a look, this is BMW that is F-series. This is not E-series, okay? This is F-series BMW. It's the next generation after BMW E-series. It's different. So <clears throat> if you're trying to do a software update, the proper way of doing things is that you have to have, first of all, BMW factory scan tool, not aftermarket scan tool that you bought for millions of dollars, okay? That's, by the way, the most hated uh, argument that I hear every single time I'm talking to different type of mechanics or, or people who simply, you know, spend thousands of dollars buying scanner that they, they don't even know the, the, how to use it. They don't even have a real purpose for that scanner because they don't even know what they're buying it for. It just says on a scanner that it's able to program BMW and they think, yeah, it's gonna fix all the problems. Well. Let me tell you something. There is no scanner that's going to fix more problems than factory scan tool, okay? So if you deal with BMW or Mercedes or Audi or Volkswagen, please make sure you buy factory scan tool because factory scan tool, you know, intend to be a factory equipment. It has everything needed for this vehicle. It was designed by uh, this specific brand, you know, and they spend millions of dollars of building equipment that works properly with this car. There's no aftermarket tool that ever made something better than actual brand manufacturer. So, with this set, when you want to fix, uh, I mean, update the whole car, you have to bring it to someone who has this factory scan tool and also subscription with the BMW server because in 2021, you know, people trying to get updates over the air, you know, it means through the internet. So if you want to have access to get such a technologically advanced vehicle updated, you have to make sure that you follow a very strict process that says that you have to hook up the car to the scanner and get every single computer updated one by one, literally like it says, following the instruction for this specific VIN number, for this specific vehicle, and you have to follow those instructions to get everything updated properly. Yes, yes, don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. You still can update each computer individually on this vehicle, okay? And I bring it back, this is F series, not easy. So yes, you can update every single computer separately, but it, it's very, very dangerous because the chance that you are going to kill the module or maybe, you know, something is going to happen during the data transfer from a server that's located in Germany and those uh, sofa experts, you know, bench experts who are typing right now comment on YouTube saying that they did this 1,000 times, no problems for BMW. Trust me, if you want to be safe, 
just do not listen to those experts who bought Skinner and they think that they know everything. The chance that you are going to fail is very, very, very high because of millions of factors that, you know, uh, even a small fact that you are doing this not with the right equipment can already ruin the whole process. And after that, instead of, you know, spending 175 or 200 bucks to get this car updated, you're going you're gonna to end up spending $3,000 to get everything fixed because you simply use something that you shouldn't use. So anyhow, the customer said that they bring that, that, that uh, this car basically was running before perfectly, no problem. It was literally no issue. And then after this genius, you know, did this software update with his super fancy tool, the car failed. And basically they had no ignition, no lights, no nothing. They couldn't even ski in the car. So they thought reasonably, I should say, that it's a problem with the CAS module which is car access system module, right? It's a security module that links directly with the key and the engine control module. If that computer is actually bad, you won't be able to read the key, you won't be able to turn the ignition on. So they tested everything, wiring, put the new battery, still no power, so they thought it's the cast module. Well, they decided to bring the car here, right, to our shop. And, um, you know, just running a little bit up front, I'll tell you that we are not in the mechanic shop, we're only electronics shop that deals specifically with electronics. We don't touch anything that's related to mechanical job. We don't remove engine, we don't fix engines, we don't fix transmissions, we don't fix uh, suspension, we don't fix any of those things if, unless it's related to computers like this, specifically to electronics or a little wire or the whole wiring. As you can see, tons of wires around this engine. So if there are problems like this, this is what we specialize on. Right, we don't specialize on mechanical job. So, anyways, uh, we we start looking and trying to see what is the real problem, and we realize that the cast module in this vehicle is working, the key is working, everything else is working, and then the way how we find that out is with, we literally took this thing out of the car, brought it to our bench simulator, which I'll be showing you later, maybe in another video. But then anyhow, anyhow, we'll make it we'll make it real, we'll make it happen. So anyways, um, you know, we installed everything on the bench, we see that everything turns on, so we realized if cast module and ECU and everything works fine, it should be something else. In our practice, most of the time when there is no power, it's a gateway module. This vehicle, BMW E-Series, they have gateway module behind the glove box, called JBBF or JBBE. Uh, on BMW F-Series, it's, it's called uh, ZGW. It's literally called like this, ZGW. So this is a gateway module. This is the computer that provides communication between um, OBD, between engine control module, uh, security module, keys, and pretty much every single computer that's connected in this vehicle, the connection goes through the gateway module. That's why it's called gateway module, okay? Because it's a gateway computer, it provides access to everything else. So we realized when the genius with million dollars equipment, you know, did his brilliant, amazing job with no mistakes, and I guarantee you, no mistakes, he literally did this 100,000 times and never did a mistake. He, you know, ruined the gateway module. We realized it's a problem. We got another one used. All right, we bought the used gateway module, installed it, uh, got it programmed. Now vehicle starts. It starts, it even runs, but as soon as we got it started, by the way, it started right away as soon as we replaced the gateway module. So as soon as the car started, we realized that it's in a limp mode, which we never been told before. But anyways, we called the shop, you know, who get this car to us, and we told them, guys, you know, we got this car running, you know, it's running, everything is okay, but it's still, um, it's in a limp mode. And, you know, following the entire data that we got from the BMW scanner, which, which is called, by the way, ISTA or ISTA or ISTA Rain Gold or, or you know, BMW factory scan tool, but definitely not anything else. So anyhow, uh, we got everything tested and it turns out that it most likely mechanical damage. So we said, we, we called the shop and we said, guys, we, we are pretty much sure it's a mechanical damage because you know, following by all the codes and all the live data that we can get from this car, uh, everything is pointing to, to the mechanical problem. And the problem is the following. The car starts, it runs, it even drives, but it literally has no power. 
So you press the accelerator and it drives maybe five to 10 miles an hour. So, you know, the, the guys from the other shop said, um, we, we checked everything mechanical wise. Uh, we, we know for sure it's not a mechanical problem. Well, I'm not trying to blame anybody. You know, I'm not trying to say anything bad about anybody else, but uh, we said, fine, let, let's, let's, try, let, let's try to see if we can replace let's say engine control module because engine control module might be a problem especially uh, with the limp mode because it contains special thing that's called power class and the power class is like a special software feature that you know defines a power management system in this vehicle but anyways uh, we replaced the engine control module so we literally took the original one out which is located right here this is the engine control module and that's the location of the computer right we literally took that computer out, which we, which we, by the way, said to the customer right away, it is not the computer. We know it's not gonna fix the problem because computer has no codes. Computer, you know, reads data out of the entire engine department, uh, compartment, and then, you know, it, it literally has no problems. Yes, it, it, it complains about the uh, reduced power mode, but it doesn't mean that the engine control module is bad. So anyways, customer said, replace it, let's see what's gonna happen. Well, we got another one. It's exactly the same computer, exactly the same part number. It's a used module out of the exact same vehicle. Uh, we got it tuned, by the way, and we transferred the data from this computer, which is the original, to this one, which is used one. And right now, this car starts with the original computer, and at the same time, it starts with the used computer, right? So both computers you can install, both computers are going to start the vehicle. So following the customer's theory, he thought if he replaced the engine control module, which by the way, just the unit itself costs around three, maybe 400 bucks, which is, which is you know, pretty, pretty big price for, for just a computer. That's not including labor, that's not including programming fees, that's not including anything, just, just the piece itself, 350 bucks, and again, we said up front, it's not going to fix the problem. But anyhow, they decided to try, see what's going to happen. Got this computer replaced. Even without chip tuning, we installed it. It's doing exactly the same thing. <laughs> Nothing changed. Nothing changed at all. And, you know, before you guys uh, start texting uh, tons of comments saying how um, uh, how unprofessional we are and uh, we know literally nothing about cars but you guys do know absolutely I believe you trust me I'm not even gonna argue with you let me turn this car on let it run and get, get closer let them hear the engine sound and then we'll talk about that in a few sure if you could clearly hear everything that I was able to hear but uh, if if you did hear this then this engine runs like a diesel engine this is a gasoline vehicle but it runs like a diesel which tells me that this is definitely a mechanical problem what this exactly is I don't know but that this could be valvatronic this could be bad uh, valves this could be bad injectors this could be whatever whatever it could be that's causing this sound which is not good this is not a healthy sound for this engine and for any for any gasoline engine this is not really good when the engine is so loud uh, and that is why when we replace and yeah by the way all this you know setup right now is with the original computer so it's not replaced so it's not gonna work that you're gonna tell me that this is tuned computer that broke the engine no this is the original one that's that's making this sound and now let's try to remove the original let me install this one just so you can see that it's going to start okay which means that we did the job we cloned the data which yes of course everybody can do with clicking one button i know you guys are experts no no doubt no doubt but let me install this one and see what's going to happen all right so first of all i would like to make sure that the ignition is completely off before I do 
okay, when you take the computer off, you want to make sure that you don't force anything because you don't want to break the connector, you don't want to break the plastic, you don't want to break any wiring, and you just want to make sure that whatever you do, you do accurately without breaking anything, okay? And you do step by step. Original computer is here. <laughs> it's working. Again, there's no problems with this computer. It's working. Number. And now let me take, use one. Same number. Same exact number. Identical. Same computer. Now I'm taking, use one. I'm installing it back. Let me see what is going to change. Is the car going to sound different? Do you see that the computer is installed right now? It's a used one because the original one is in my hands. Okay, what do you see? Now let's try and see if it starts and sounds Same sound, same, same exact sound, same diesel-like sound engine that sounds absolutely horrible and I would better turn it off. So as you can see, that first of all it starts with both computers, right? Which first of all means that we did transfer the data from the original to the other one properly because it started right up with no problems. Also it proves that the actual computer original and used one are working fine and definitely not the computer problem and this sound is definitely telling me that this is not sensor problem this is not a wiring problem this is a mechanical damage that definitely has to be taken care of asap so uh yeah in this video guys i just would like to you know uh, explain to you and maybe save you from uh, wasting your money for nothing. Someone is telling you that uh, you know you can simply go and update the computer uh, and it's simply one button job then you are wrong. And when you pay money that uh, seems a little higher uh, than if you would pay with some Craigslist dude then probably it's a reason for that. It, it would better if you spend 500 bucks for real legit programming then you you spend 150 and end up paying over $3,000 to find out the actual problem. After you paid already all the fees and programming and buying computers and stuff, things that you simply could save, you know, and, and buy yourself a present or nice rims or, or something, or maybe present to your kids or maybe to your wife. I definitely recommend you talking to real professionals. I definitely recommending you subscribing to the channel. Absolutely leave a like button. And if I was able to save at least one BMW for doing things that they shouldn't do, then I'm very, very happy. Don't forget guys to subscribe to the channel. This is ECU team. And if you have any engine control module problems, any questions related to BMW or Mercedes security systems, definitely make sure you give us a call.